when should you use a 20 mm lens? When an 85 mm lens? And what about a classic 50 mm? The difference among focal lengths is not just a matter of how much stuff you can get into the frame. If it was just about that, it would be easy to choose one over another. Do you have in front of you a large vista? Then a 20 mm is fantastic. Need to take a picture of a distant mountain peak? Swap the 12 mm for a 300 mm and you'll be fine. Do this and you'll be shooting pictures as boring as those of 90% of people. I'm going to quote Jim Simmons, a fellow photographer, who gave, in my opinion, the best definition of the character of each focal length. Speaking in full frame terms, I feel that we sense in 21 mm, we perceive in 28 mm, we see in 35 to 40 mm, we look at in 50 mm, and we examine in 75 to 90 mm. Now let's go deeper to understand what he meant with that. I've always had a hard time deciding which lens to choose, especially between similar focal lengths like 35 mm and 50. I like them both very much, and I can get good pictures with both of them, but which one to choose? At first I tend to use much more the 50 mm outside and the 35 mm inside, but still this was not the answer. And then I finally noticed that something that changed my lens game forever, and I hope we'll do the same for you. You pick up pretty soon, even as a beginner, that pictures shot with telephoto lenses appear more detached, while if you're using a wide angle, the resulting photographs will look much more like you're in the midst of the action. So lens choice is first of all a way to convey mood, not just a way to capture the entirety of a scene. Sure, composition has its place, but it is the other way around. You choose a lens and then compose, not vice versa. Besides, lens choice also affects your viewer's freedom. As a general rule, the longer you go up in focal length, the less freedom your viewer will have to explore as he wishes your picture. A picture shot at 12 mm is like a world forest with almost no paths, where the viewer can go as he pleases. An image shot at 300 mm will be like one of those guided wooden paths that led to visit a national park without even stepping on the grass. Both can be nice experiences, but won't appeal to the same people. But there is much more to this. The focal lengths are also a deep connection with the way we perceive reality. So let's look at the real difference between the different focal lengths and what should determine your choice. But first, thank you for joining me today. If you are enjoying this video, be sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe for more photography tips, tricks and education. 21mm and larger focal lengths look at the world in the way we tend to absorb a scene. You are on a beach and you take everything in. The sand, the glimmering of seawater, the beach umbrellas and so on and so forth. Your attention will probably focus on nothing in particular though. Larger focal lengths do not discriminate easily among different elements. The wider you go, the more important composition becomes. It will be the photographer's responsibility to guide the viewer gaze where he wants. Sometimes there will be no section more important than other, and in, in that case, the photographer will uh, leave to the viewer's freedom to decide where he wants to look. This is not an easy feat, and in general, the larger a section of the scene you capture, the more difficult it will become to make a picture that's not boring. 24 and 28 mm are the way we perceive the world around us, meaning that th this is the way we generally focus on a scene, giving attention to some bits, but also scanning all around the actual action taking place. You see the guy riding the camel, but uh, the tents in the background and the palm tree on the left as well, even if your attention is focused on the rider. Not for anything, 24 and 28 mm have always been a favorite among photojournalists. Composing becomes way easier in comparison with wider lenses because you're forced to make a choice and cut off a particular section of a scene, thus focusing the attention of the viewer on a specific action or section. Capturing a moment becomes much easier as well because you only have to observe a specific direction for the right moment to click the shutter. And now one of my favorites, the 35mm focal lens and the self-sibling the 40mm. This is how you tend to see a scene, meaning that the 35mm lens tends to capture the entire cone of attention, so to speak, of our gaze. A 
Another long time favorite focal length of many photojournalists. A 35 mm lens lets you put your subject or the action in context. Any picture you take won't be just a photo of a person, but of a person in their environment. This is fantastic focal length for shooting single images that contain an entire story. Sure, a wider lens like a 24 mm can do the same, but it often brings that little bit of distortion that let us brain know that you are looking at a picture and not at a slice of reality itself. With 35 mm you can start as well shooting portraits. On big classical portraits, facial features will be distorted, the nose especially will be exaggerated, but on the other hand you will gain a sense of intimacy with your subject, a presence that a longer focal length will lack. An amazing feature that any 35mm has is that you can quickly estimate your composition without the need to bring the camera to your eye. The distance between you and your designated subject will be the width of your picture, meaning how much of the scene you will be able to capture. So to go back to our camel rider example from before, if you are standing two meters away from the camel, the horizontal amount of the scene that you will be able to capture will be two meters as well. If you are standing instead five meters away, the width of the scene that you will be able to capture, the, the width of the scene that will be in your picture will be five meters and so on. This is another big reason why 35 mm is an all-time favorite among photojournalists. They can quickly compose without the need of looking through the viewfinder just briefly rising the camera only for the time needed to take the shot. How do you choose between 35mm and 50mm? Well, in 50mm we are no longer just gazing at our subject, but we are really looking at him, concentrating our attention, focusing our attention. It is the equivalent of moving closer to something or someone to better examine a detail. Use a 50mm when you want to really show something to your viewers, pointing their attention in a specific direction. 50mm is possibly my favorite focal length to shoot portraits with, because while still retaining that sense of intimacy that 35mm has, it will distort less facial features. In the last years, 50mm has become a favorite lens to practice taking part in challenges like uh, one lens, one year and such. Well, <laughs> when I start taking pictures, I began using my dad's camera, that came, like it was pretty standard at the time, with a 50mm lens and I used that same lens that I still use by the way today and only that 50mm lens for 6-7 years straight. After a bit, you begin to get pretty familiar with what the framing will be and you start composing without even thinking. Lenses from 75mm to 105mm are essentially magnifying glasses. Not just because they make every detail bigger, but because we resort to them when we need to examine a scene or a subject in detail. They also tend to flatten the perspective due to the fact that you will no longer need to get closer to your main subject. And this makes them excellent when you want to emphasize the 2D graphical aspect of a scene. For the same reason, these are the lenses that will not add any distortion to a face, besides making it look a bit flatter, so they are often preferred by classical portrait and fashion photographers. In pretty much every system and format I ever had, my most used combination has ever been either a 24mm plus an 85mm for versatility, and a 35mm plus a 50mm for the quality of the results, in terms of how much I liked the pictures I took. Lenses over 105mm are, in my opinion, special uses lenses only. You tend to use them for something really specific. For example, a fashion photographer that wants a 300mm f2.8 for maximum compression and to blow the backgrounds to bit. Landscape shooter who wants to compress the composition in order to give its images a more graphical aspect. Or because, quite simply, you cannot get close enough to your subject to fill the frame as much as you wish. Think uh, bird or sport photography. So what focal lengths should you use? Like many things in life, <laughs> it depends. If you are a total beginner, try to look at pictures shot with different focal lengths, just to understand if you like or not the results, preferably before shelling out a lot of money for a new toy. In the end, you might discover that 90 plus percent of your favorite pictures have been shot with just one or two lenses. If you want to go deeper into photographic rabbit hole, but without anyone suggesting you to buy new stuff, you might also like this video here. 
Thank you, and I will see you next time. Happy pictures! Thank you.